All right. I think we're live. Okay. Let me get this pulled up here on my end. Get the comments up. If yeah. you guys can hear us and see us, feel free to comment down below. Say hello. Make sure everything's working. Looks like I'm getting signal. Okay. Um, I got comments. Okay. All right. Uh, one second here. I'm almost ready. Okay. I think I got it all pulled up. I think we're good to go. Excellent. Awesome. Excellent. We got Shelly Rocks in the house. There she is. She says, I'm at the gym. Yeah. Good for her. Come on I like now. That. I like that. Uh, Southern Keto is here. Says, can't wait. This is my relaxation time every week. There we go. I always appreciate Victor being there. He and I are working on some cool stuff. And uh, it's not going to be long now. So you guys stick around for that. Yeah. Um, Simpson John says, well, well, this is perfect. I am just doing Chris's tortilla recipe right now. Just getting ready to cook them in my mini waffle maker to make a more hamburger bun. There we go. That's a cool use for that. I really like that. If you put the first batch in, by the way, if it doesn't work or something feels like it's falling apart, add some more egg white powder before you try the second one. So I've had a few people that have told me that, uh, They've struggled with that tortilla recipe. I think it's probably because of the particular skillet or maybe the temperature they're using. But if you're struggling a little bit, extra egg white powder, give it a couple of minutes to kind of soak, mix it up really well. Should be good to go. Absolutely. Um, Risa's Cluttered Kitchen says, I'm outside smoking my brisket and then I'm going to finish it in my Instapot so I don't have to run in and out all night. There we go. That's Brisket's, a great technique. Uh, brisket sounds amazing. It does sound amazing. It sounds really, really good. We See, love brisket. Absolutely. Um, hey, you guys, by the way, if you can hear us okay, uh, just comment down below. Make sure you can hear us and see us okay. Yeah. Um, and then also let us know where you're watching from. Absolutely. And if they have questions. Yeah. Uh, drop, the, drop the questions down there. We, we appreciate that. That's why I'm here to not only show you guys what we're cooking tonight, but to also answer any of the questions you might have along the way about this or other recipes or keto or carnivore or our personal lives or the dog or the fish or anything else you want to know about. We're open books we're here so Absolutely. just ask away fantastic so what are we making tonight yeah so everyone in my community for the most part asked to see the burger patties that i did with my carnivore burger buns and i thought let's not make everybody wait any longer let's go ahead and do it so we're going to do those burger patties that i do when I don't have a way to grill out and cook out and you know do all that kind of stuff so how do you make a really great burger patty in the kitchen when you're trying to make this all happen. So I'm gonna show you a cool technique I use, and I think this will uh, at least be another option of how you can do some really great burger patties, and it's something a little bit different than when you do them just on a grill. Uh, I, listen, I love a good grilled burger like anybody. I love the flavor of that smokiness and the crust you get, but I can't have a grill where we live right now, so I gotta make do with my oven and my stove top for all the things that I cook. So I'm gonna show you guys how I do these and maybe they'll end up on your menu for your, your next cookout, quote unquote. So, and I think we have a couple of uh, the carnivore buns left over in the refrigerator actually from dinner last night, which you guys will be seeing that video coming soon. Um, so we'll probably throw these on a couple of the burger buns tonight. Absolutely. Actually, uh, have have a question about your burger bun recipe. Yeah. Um, QZ, QQQ, mm. uh, could, could your hamburger bun recipe be useful for hot dogs? What kind of mold to use for hot dog buns? Yes, absolutely it can. And I have, uh, where are they? They're down here somewhere. <clears throat> okay, hold on, he's digging in the cabinet. I'm digging. They're somewhere down there. I'm digging. There they are. <clears throat> Silicone hot dog bun molds. And this is a set of four. And there is a video on my channel called Frankenfingers, which was kind of like little uh, pig in a blanket kind of things that I did during Halloween this last year. I don't think very many people watched that one because they do look a little grotesque, but it's fun for Halloween. Uh, these are actually linked in the description of that video. And when I'm done with this live stream tonight, I will go and link them in this video as well. Super handy. We've, we've used them for a couple different things that I know of. Yeah, those are great. Yeah. That's exactly what I would do 
is just find like a silicone hot dog bun mold, whether it's those or something similar. If you click on my Amazon link that's down in the description, um, it just supports the channel if you use that link and then go find it on Amazon and buy whatever it is you're looking for. So Awesome. Yeah. Um, that's great. Happy Fair actually said, <clears throat> I just made your burger buns. Fabulous. Thank so, you. Perfect timing on the burgers. Yes, yes. These burger buns that I've been doing are just, I, they've been good for a long time, but I refined the recipe. And that's why I thought it was time to redo the video and why we did the one there a couple of weeks ago. And I, I just, I think they're just even that much better. They're so, so good. It's it's honestly hard to tell when you put the meat and everything on it. It's hard to tell that it's not a regular bun for us. So here, here. Super cool. So yeah, so I'm gonna get started on this. You guys go ahead and just ask me questions. Um, I'll just show you what I've got going on here really quickly. And then I'll start doing this, showing you the process. If you have questions, drop them down below. Also, if you don't mind, hit the thumbs up button to let YouTube know this is a cool video. And there's a share button down there. If you wanna put it on your social media, send it to a friend, just however it is you would like to let people know that I do this, I would really appreciate that because that helps us out a lot. So um, so I have my oven set to broil right now. Um, so 525 is the highest temperature that works at and it's the top element because we're gonna be using the broiler. And I have two, it's a little over, two pounds of 7327 like super fatty ground beef. Um, I have, now this is one of the secrets here. This is a little bit less than a cup of cottage cheese, whole milk cottage cheese. You can use uh, anywhere from a quarter cup to a half a cup of cottage cheese per pound of meat. It's a really great balance, but this is one of the big secrets of what's gonna make these so good. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put the beef and the cottage cheese into my food processor. I actually have this linked down below as well if you're looking for a new food processor. This thing is incredible. Um, so I'm gonna throw this in here to the food processor and then we're gonna get these whipping up and I'll show you how we're gonna season them as well. Awesome. There are so many people commenting, by the way, just saying how excited they are for these burger patties tonight. Oh, okay, well cool. Well, I'm glad are you guys pumped. are here. Um, I'm telling you what, <clears throat> burger patties, are a staple in this house because you know ground beef is cheap and when you get the really fatty kind the 7327 it's really full of fat and it's really flavorful and honestly you can do these in big batches in your oven and you can have them ready to go for a family you can also make these burger patties and put freezer paper in between the patties and freeze them and then you can take the raw patty and put it under the broiler frozen it's just gonna take it longer to cook, but you can actually cook these from frozen. I've done that too. So this is great to like batch recipe things, either cook for a big family or put them in the freezer and have them ready to pull out for a quick dinner. So ground beef goes in, cottage cheese goes in. There's a little bit of water that has come out of this cottage cheese. It's sitting in the bowl. I'm just gonna put that in too because it's not gonna hurt anything. It's not that much. And put that right on top. And you wanna make sure to get whole milk cottage cheese, get the cleanest you can find. I know some of them have some ingredients in them we don't necessarily like, but you know, here's the thing with the whole carnivore thing, the way I do it, <clears throat> I keep it as clean as I possibly can. I'm also realistic enough to know we live in a society that is filled with products that have things in them that I wish they didn't, but it's just the truth of it. I just do the best I can, and if sometimes a little bit of something gets into my diet, I limit it as much as possible, but I also try not to harness my focus in that area. I try to focus on getting away from that as much as I can, using as many whole things as I can, but occasionally for things like this, just understanding the realistic nature of what we deal with in society is that you might get a little of it. So I just cut it out everywhere that I can and I just do the best I can. So I've got my ground beef and my cottage cheese in there. To season this, I'm using this Redmond's Real Salt uh, Hickory Smoked Salt. So I'm gonna get a little bit of a smoke flavor in there with this smoked salt. And I've got this link down below as well. If you've never seen it, I found that on Amazon as well. So um, Redmond sells it directly, but there's an Amazon link down there as well. So I'm gonna put in like uh, maybe a teaspoon of this. I mean, this is really just a season to taste kind of a thing. You know, you guys just decide like what, what level of seasoning you would like. And here's the deal. If you want some other kind of seasoning, you can put in whatever you want. I'm just gonna do this smoked salt to add a nice little hint of a smoky flavor because I don't have that grill to go outside and get a smoky flavor. 
So yeah, that's that's like somewhere between a half teaspoon and a teaspoon. I'm just eyeballing it. I know about how we like our meat seasoned. And then <clears throat> black pepper seasonings are always optional. So if something does not sit right with you, modify it or leave it out, whatever you want to do. But I'm going to do like a half teaspoon of black pepper. And I always use fresh ground because I find it just has so much more flavor to it than the pre-ground stuff. I also like it a little coarser than what the pre-ground stuff usually is. And then to jazz it up a little more, we're going to do about a half teaspoon of garlic powder and about a half teaspoon of onion powder. Awesome. Like that. Uh, Deborah Hamilton says, my first live. Woohoo! All Hello right. From I'm so Atlanta. glad you're here. Yeah. Atlanta, you're not that far from us. No. She says, can't wait for some great burgers. And she also just made your brioche buns two days ago. Yeah, there we go. That's another great recipe. You know, I had someone ask an interesting question on my channel the other day. They said, which is better, the brioche buns or the new carnivore hamburger buns that you just did? And I was like, honestly, six of one, half dozen of the other. Um, the brioche buns are eggier because they have egg yolks in them, lots of egg yolks because brioche is an egg-based bread. The carnivore buns I just did are more like the cheap white, you know, bread carnivore buns you would buy, or carnivore buns, the, the burger buns you would buy at the store. So just two completely different styles, but they're both really, really good. So we got that in the food processor. You know pop this on and we're just going to pulse this together. We don't want to completely turn this into just a, a smearing paste, but we want to get this pretty well combined. And if it starts to turn into a paste in the bottom too much and it doesn't seem like the top is doing very well, then we get out a big old spatula. I linked the spatulas below because I've had people ask me about those. So those are linked down there too if you need some good silicone spatulas. But we're going to take this and just kind of turn the beef over. You just got to be careful of the blade down there. But we're just going to kind of get under the meat and lift that. See the pasty stuff from the bottom there kind of coming up. We're trying to get that to start to roll over the top of the rest of it. Put the lid back on. We'll keep pulsing. Cool. Um, I have a question for you, if you don't yep, mind. Absolutely. Uh, Crimson Woodworking says, love your content. What's your opinion on hero bread? On hero bread. So I've never tasted hero bread. So um, let me start out with, I can't really tell you what I think as far as flavor, but I have read the ingredients. Um, it's not super clean in my opinion. Uh, I'm not saying it wouldn't work in a pinch, but <clears throat> it's not exactly the cleanest of ingredients, although it likes to present itself as being such. It has a lot of fibers, it has a lot of gluten-y type stuff. Um, the other thing is it's expensive. It's super, super expensive. Now, for the convenience of not having to make it yourself, it's great. And as products like that on the market go, it's probably better than a lot of them. But this is why I develop all of my own carnivore bread recipes because I try to use as little of like the fibers and the, you know, gels and anything else that's out there. I try to do it with all carnivore ingredients the best I can. And I definitely don't want to have to pay like 12 or $15 for a bag of bread when I can make it for four or $5 myself. And that's including the egg white powder that I use, which is the more expensive ingredient, but I get the big things on sale and there's not that much in my recipes. That's why I like doing that. So, but if you're looking for convenience and you don't mind paying for it, I think the hero bread is probably one of the better options out there. Cool. Okay, you can see how that kind of forms a ball now. So we're just gonna roll it around. Yeah, just like that. Awesome. Um, Rank and Cook wants to know, have you ever tried cooking the hamburger patties in the air fryer? I have, actually that's what I used to do before I started doing them under the broiler. Um, the air fryer also does a good job and we liked the crust and everything that I got onto the burger patties that way. The problem I always had with the air fryer was it's hard to get enough of them in because I do like great big half pound burger patties and I'll do like four to six of those at a time. And I just had a hard time getting them all into the air fryer. So I found the 
uh, use of the broiler to make it a little more economical and convenient. But if you were only doing like two of them at a time, especially if you're cooking for yourself, uh, the air fryer does a great job. Sweet. Uh, Cheryl says, thank you so much for all your hard work and dedication to eating better and sharing it with us. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you guys for all your support. Here's the deal. We can't do this without you guys. We can't afford to do this without the support we have. Shout out to my Patreon members um, and my YouTube members, everybody in the band. You guys uh, just keep us going. In fact, this food processor is a thing in my kitchen because of my band members. Like we, we took one of the Patreon payouts and, and you know spent that on getting the food processor because it's you know it's it's tough to do this kind of stuff it takes a lot of resources but you guys are the ones that support it and we just really appreciate you being here and helping us out with this so i can keep doing it have the time and the resources to do this for you guys because i love doing this absolutely so put it in the bowl yeah i'm just going to get it out of the food processor into a bowl just so i can work with it and grab chunks of it without cutting my fingers on the food processor blade because that would not be particularly enjoyable. No, definitely be careful not. with that, especially because when it gets goopy, it gets slippery. Yeah. Um, Jan Rudd actually has a pretty good question. Yeah. Uh, she wants to know, could you blend this the old fashioned way by hand? Absolutely, you can. Um, here's the thing you're going to have to do if you want to do this by hand. You're going to need to use a knife, hopefully a sharp one, and you're going to need to chop, 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 chop. Because if you just put the beef into a bowl, with like a big spoon and you just blend it all together that way without actually chopping the meat fibers any smaller, you're going to end up with chunky pieces of beef and it's not going to emulsify the cottage cheese into the meat mixture and it's not gonna break up the meat fibers properly. So it's gonna be chewy. Um, this, if you watched my meatballs recipe video, you saw me use the food processor for that meat mixture. That's one of the reasons why. What keeps it tender and enjoyable and moist all the way through is emulsifying the fat through there, especially the cheese and the dairy type stuff. The only way to do that is to use a blade and get that to all chop up and whip together. So you can totally do it by hand. It is going to take some muscle, but you can do it, but you will need to use a knife to do that. Cool. So. Taking off the wedding ring. I'm sliding it over on the other hand there get, so I can. Getting serious. That's right. <clears throat> cool and we have some people hun, that are just tuning in yeah um do you think you can just go over what it is you're making and absolutely just what you've done so far just for yep everyone so watching? this is the secret burger patty recipe that everybody asked me about in the comment section on my carnivore burger buns video and all i did is a two pound container a little over two pound container of 20 uh 27 i'm sorry 23 70, 27, 73, whatever it is. It's the fattiest beef. I think it's 73, 27 beef from the grocery store. Uh, it's about two pounds, a little over that of that. And anywhere from a quarter to a half cup of whole milk cottage cheese per pound of beef. So this has right around a cup of cottage cheese and then smoked salt from Redmond's, uh, garlic pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, and black pepper. Uh, all into a food processor and I've pulsed it up to put it together into a paste and now we're gonna form burger patties out of it. Heck yeah. Um, Denise wants to know could you use liquid smoke? Yes you absolutely can and I think mine is in the cabinet. I've got some somewhere. Um, I limit the amount of liquid smoke I use just because it has some ingredients in it. I'm kind of <sighs> you know, whatever, but you absolutely, if you want a smokier vibe, you could totally put some liquid smoke in this. And if you're, if you're comfortable with those ingredients and it works well for you, then by all means go for it. I think, uh, it does taste really good. I just, I don't use it real frequently, but, uh, when I do, I really enjoy the results. So, yeah. And Deborah also wants to know if you don't have cottage cheese, could you use sour cream? You could use sour cream. Um, you might struggle a little bit with that because sour cream has a higher water content. If you don't have cottage cheese, my first other two recommendations would be ricotta cheese. That's what I use in my meatball recipe or cream cheese. Those would be my first choices, but as a third alternative, you could use sour cream as a fourth alternative. You could maybe use like a Greek yogurt. Um, those are not going to work quite as well, but they, they will still work. Cool. 
Okay. So to form burger patties, I had someone ask me this one time, how do you keep them from being, you know, all humped up and rounded? I'm going to show you what we do. So my thumbs go in the center, my palms and fingers support the patty underneath. I'm pushing into the center as I'm turning. And then I'm using the thumb and the fingers like this to create a ring around the outside. And you just keep going around and around and around and around. And by squeezing, now I'm not pulling and stretching, I'm squeezing gently and I'm squishing this out into the shape that I want because that way you don't break through the meat and end up creating big gaps in your burger that then, you know, it falls apart and it, it you know, especially if you're going to do something like this, put it on a grill. You definitely don't want spots in your burger patties that are going to fall apart. So once I get it out to basically the size that I want, you can see it has kind of this divot in the center. I'm going to encourage that even more, push it the rest of the way. This is just an ungreased baking sheet. There's nothing on this. This beef is plenty fatty. I don't need to put anything on the baking sheet. So I'm pressing down in the center. I'm leaving this hole here in the center so it's scooped out like this. So what's going to happen is the outer edge here is thicker. So this is not going to overcook before this gets cooked. And as this cooks, it's going to shrink inwards and it's going to pull that up. As the fat cooks out, it shrinks inwards and it's going to pull the center up. So when the patty is starting to rise in the center and it's not scooped so much anymore, it's going to come up almost level. Sometimes it'll even go above level depending on the size of the patty. That's when I know the center of it is cooked and the center is cooked without the outside being dry. Awesome. Everyone is uh, commenting, by the way, I see several comments talking about how big the meat patties are. Yes. I don't do these small. Yeah. <laughs> um, here's the deal. As a carnivore, I eat a lot of meat and I eat a lot of burger patties um, because it's, again, convenient and it's cheap. And I mean, I'll, I'll sit and eat a pound of beef and like six or eight eggs without even, without even hesitating. Like that's, that's just normal dinner for me. So these are like half pound, roughly a little over half pound patties. Um, Ash will probably only eat one of these and then she might have the other one tomorrow for lunch. Or, uh, you know, if she doesn't eat it and if I'm still super hungry, I may even eat a second one or a third one rather, but. Yeah, I always say that Chris never does anything small. Nope. It's one of my favorite things about him. It's like <laughs> huge meat patties. Oh, look at our cutting board. I mean, it takes up like the counter. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we just, we, no, just go all out. Why I don't not? cook small and I don't think small or dream small either. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Um, awesome. These are also super tasty. I love these meat patties. I'm mm -hmm. so excited. The for these. texture of these is so great too, because I mean, this is like, like when you go to a fast food restaurant and you get a burger patty, this is essentially kind of a version of what's been done to it where they have blitzed it up into a paste. They go much further than this with it. You guys have seen the pink slime. And although I don't care for the ingredients in the pink slime, I still enjoy the actual texture of a fast food burger patty. I just don't like the things they put in them that I can't trust what's in it. So this is a way to get that kind of vibe of like a fast food style burger patty. It goes great on the grill if you have one. It goes great, uh, you know, with the carnivore burger buns. It does really good under the broiler like I'm going to show you here. Like they're just really easy to work with and they taste great. And the texture of chewing them is so soft and so nice, just like a fast food patty. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nancy Griffith says, I'm at work, but trying to watch as I can. You are a genius. Oh, thank you so much, Nancy. I think you're just great. And I appreciate the fact that even though you're at work, you're trying to have me on in the background. That's very cool. If your boss walks in and says anything, you just tell him how great this is and, and it'll be fine. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, Mimi745 wants yeah. to know, can you put a wireless meat thermometer on your Amazon shop? Yeah, absolutely. So... <clears throat> Um, there's a couple of them that I actually really like. I've got one on the side of the refrigerator over here that I use from time to time. Um, <clears throat> the other thing though about my Amazon shop, so if you guys click on the link that is in the description box down below for my Amazon shop, it's going to ask you to sign in if you're not already signed in. Sign into your account and then even if you don't see something in my Amazon shop that you were trying to buy, <clears throat> excuse me, you can use the search function and go search on whatever it is you're looking to buy. And because you clicked, clicked on my link and signed in, whatever you go get, I still get credit for it. So I'm more than happy to put one in the shop for you guys so you can see you know, the ones that I really enjoy that I use. Uh, but if you don't see something that you like, but you still want to support the channel, you can just click the link and go there anyway. 
I love it. So we really appreciate you guys using that because it's uh, just, you know, just a few bucks here at the here and there at the end of the month that help us buy some more ingredients and we appreciate every bit, so. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna let those sit for just a minute here. Ash is gonna have some broccoli with her burger patty. So I have some fresh cut up broccoli florets. There's uh, maybe a quarter cup of water at most in the bottom of that. And I'm just gonna put this in the microwave and then I'm gonna finish it in a skillet over here on the stove and I'll show you how. But we're gonna put that in. I'm gonna do eight minutes because she likes her broccoli soft. So we're gonna get it really nice and cooked there and then we'll finish it here and that will cook it soft the rest of the way. Awesome. Um, Sharon says, I made your mashed potatoes last night and had it again today. I love it, I love it, I love it. I'm so also, glad. Also made your mac and cheese. My husband loved it and wants me to make it again this week. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, those are <laughs> those are both great recipes. They really are. <laughs> they, they are. <laughs> they I really, love really the mac are. and cheese and the potatoes. Who would have ever thought that me making mashed potatoes out of egg whites would have turned into a cooking channel on YouTube, but here we are. Here we are, just roll so, with it. Just um, so I'm gonna have eggs with mine tonight and I'm probably gonna do six eggs. Uh, so I was gonna show you guys, there's a couple of different ways to cook, uh, to cook, to crack your eggs. Um, the normal way that everybody knows is tapping it, right, and cracking it, that's fine. Here's the deal, if you're gonna use your eggs raw and you're worried about something that may be on the outside of the shell, I don't worry about raw eggs. I consume raw eggs all the time, I've never had an issue, but I am concerned about what might be on the outside of the shell. So if you're gonna use them raw, still crack them on the table. If you're going to cook them, I've never had an issue doing this, I use the edge of a bowl because I find I get a cleaner crack on the egg. There's two ways to do it. Of course, everybody knows the crack it and stick the thumb in and separate it. That's great. It's a little faster though if you can, you can do the single hand thing. And also if you have a little bit of egg on your fingers, it becomes a lot easier, generally speaking, to get in there and get the eggshell out, although this one's being difficult. There we go. So if you hold it with one hand and you crack, you can separate it with that same hand. And I'll show you how I did that. If you're really busy doing multiple things in the kitchen, this is really helpful. So I'm gonna hold it with my finger wrapped there and my thumb here. I'm gonna crack, and the crack happens between these two fingers, between the first and second finger like that, mm -hmm. and then the second finger and the first finger grab, the thumb squeezes, squeeze just enough, and then you separate the thumb and the first finger forward, and the second finger and the palm goes backwards. It's a little hard to do it slow. You kind of have to just have the confidence to do it, like so. Awesome. And it's just oh. a lot faster if you have like 12 eggs that you need to get cracked and you're trying to do something with your other hand as well. See, just like that. You make it look so easy. Lots of practice, I've cracked thousands of eggs. I'm sure. Um, a couple different people have a question about the, uh, the meat, kind yep. of going back to that. Um, could they use a KitchenAid mixer for that? <clears throat> um, it depends on how finely ground your meat is. If the meat is really, really, really finely ground, you probably can with the wire whisk attachment. Um, it is going to work your KitchenAid mixer hard because it doesn't have something sharp, so it's trying to bust it. If your meat is not ground very, very fine, it may still work, but you're gonna struggle with it because again, you're gonna have those meat fibers that are just going to get pushed around and it's gonna be tough to get those to emulsify in with the dairy or whatever else it is you add in there at quite the same level. So you can try it. Um, it may give you some fits. Cool. So, but it's a great question. Absolutely. Um, Linda is on and she says, good evening to Chris and Ash. Hello. Just, just wanted to thank you all for your great tasting food. You guys are the best and Ash, love your music, Linda. So thank Linda you. Linda is apparently an awesome country music fan. If you guys did not know, Ash and I are professional musicians and Ash is an incredible country artist. I play lead guitar and do manager type stuff and band leader type stuff for her. And if you'd like to hear all the crazy things that she can do musically, go to ashtaylor.com. 
Uh, you're very sweet. Well, listen, we appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> I think a lot of people are super pumped for these meat patties, babe. So what do we do now with your eggs? All right. So I just put some salt and pepper on the eggs. We'll get around to those in a minute. The meat patties now, we have about three, a little under three and a half minutes, three minutes, 20 seconds. These are now going to go under the broiler. Cool. So these are going to go on the top rack right there, right under the broiler. And by putting them directly under the broiler like that, we're going to get a brown crust over the top. By the time the meat patties are done, it crusts over the top. That's the closest thing I can get to the crust that a grill or something like that outside would do. I do have a flat top griddle, which does a pretty good job, but it's a big mess to clean that up. So if I don't want to have to deal with all of that, this is a great way of doing this. Absolutely. Uh, Sharon gave you a $2 super thanks, by the way. Sharon, thank you so, so, so much. That makes such a huge difference for us when you guys do that. And it's um, never expected, but always appreciated. Yeah. Um, looks like we have a lot of people too. It's their first live stream, actually. All right. So, I'm so glad you guys are here. Yeah. That's awesome. We love you guys just being here, hanging out with us. It gives me a reason to do this when there's people watching. And uh, I love teaching these recipes. So if you guys have questions, things you've never heard me talk about, things you would like to know, like whatever it is, don't hesitate. Hit me up. Let me know. Oh, absolutely. We actually have lots of questions. So Great. if y'all can, sorry, uh, bear with me. I'm trying to run the camera and, and read everything all at the same time. I guess I'm not very good at multitasking. No, no, no. Big, big round of applause for Ash. She is, she is incredible and doing a great job. Oh, y'all are very sweet. Just trying to keep up. Um, let's see here. Ba -ba -bum. Yeah, lots of people are pumped for the uh, burger patties. Um, here's a great thing. Katie Waugh, is your goal to lose weight? And if so, how much have you lost so far? Great question. So one of my goals is to lose weight. That's not my only goal, but that is a goal. Um, the reason that I do carnivore specifically is not only is it great for my weight loss because I have extra weight to lose still, but it's also great for my mental health and things like IBS and some other, you know, medical type things that I have dealt with in my life and it makes that much, much better. So that's the reason I do carnivore specifically is for uh, some of those other medical things as well. But yes, weight loss is definitely an element of that. And to date between keto and carnivore, I've lost 132-ish pounds. I kind of float, uh, been floating right around in there and I've got probably another 50 that I would like to lose. But if you go back on my channel and you look at some of my health vlogs, you'll see some of them, there's pictures of me when I was really big and then pictures from me like a few months ago. <clears throat> and uh, I talk a little bit about kind of my health journey and my weight loss. That's kind of why I do that is to keep track of that for me and for you guys. Um, so weight loss, but also other medical things. Absolutely. Uh, Lynette Bun Bun actually says, I'm curious, Chris, what caused you to decide to go carnivore? Yeah. Yeah, so we were getting ready to get married. We had discovered keto. I'd lost a bunch of weight. I was doing really well, but I felt like I should lose a little bit more before we got married. And I was bigger then than I am now. So uh, this was the first time we did keto and carnivore. And I just tried carnivore because I thought it would give me a boost and help me lose a little more weight before our wedding pictures. And I did it. And what was it? Two weeks? Yeah. Week and a half? Something just like that about. into it. Uh, Ash told me she's like, you're happy in the mornings and I've never seen this since I've known you. Um, she was like, something is different about you. I really think carnivore is doing something different. And I, and I, I, she was right. Like I could tell, but I thought it was just in my head. So I hadn't said anything. And then she really noticed it. And I realized there was so much more about carnivore that was good for me other than just weight loss. Absolutely. Um, what brand egg white powder do you prefer? Nancy would like to know. Yeah, I use now N O W egg white protein powder. Um, <clears throat> as long as the ingredients are only egg whites, like freeze dried egg whites is the only ingredient, whether it's egg white powder or egg white protein powder, whatever the brand is for the most part, as long as egg whites is the only ingredient, they pretty much all work. But I like now it works really well and they throw that on sale on Amazon pretty regularly. So if you watch it on Amazon and search for it, you'll find it on sale. I also try to post about it on my channel every time I see it like on a really good sale and I try to get big containers of it because it lasts forever. So I get big containers of it when it's on sale to try to help you guys out. I'll share that as well. Awesome. 
So, all right, so we got a little chunk of butter there. My skillet is preheated and that is very hot. So I'm gonna grab some oven mitts so that I don't burn my thumbs off here. <clears throat> Way to play it safe, babe. Yeah, well. <laughs> no injuries in the kitchen today. Not, not today. today. Maybe next time. Maybe, Maybe next, next time. time. Guys, tune in, you never know, there might be blood next time. It's possible. So all I'm gonna do is drain off the excess water from this broccoli. It is cooked, you could eat it just like it is right now. But I'm gonna drain off the excess water. This is a really cool way if you like roasted veggies but you don't wanna put them in the oven and wait for a year for your veggies to be done. This is how I like to do these kind of roasted slash grilled veggies that Ash mm -hmm. enjoys so much. Can you also maybe uh, share your thoughts on using a, a microwave occasionally and yeah. kind of how you feel about that? Yep, absolutely. So every now and then um, I get comments from people saying that microwaves kill all the nutrition or that they make food not healthy. And until I actually read scientific research that says that, I have no reason to believe that to be true. If you do and you don't want to use a microwave, that's cool. Um, I've never seen any actual scientific research. In fact, the research I've done, scientific research seems to indicate that that's a really big myth that has actually been debunked. And just like Dr. Berry talks about the echo of the lie, I feel like until I see actual research, this is an echo of the lie where we've been told that microwaves are not good for us because of what it does to the food, and yet there's no actual research to prove that. And we've just bought into some kind of a lie that was told back in who knows when, and then we still further it and keep it going. Great. So if you don't want to use a microwave, that's cool. You can do it without it, but I do. So unless you can provide me scientific research, don't judge me for it. To each be his own. Absolutely. Um, Edna says, made your carnivore mashed potatoes today for the first time. My husband loved them. Ah, oh, that's great. Love. I love when I get messages from someone who says, my husband, my wife, my kids, my whoever tells me that this is amazing. They really enjoyed this, you know, this dish that you made, this whatever it is. It's, that's just super cool. I just love that. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Tina wants to know, are you a seasoned chef? <laughs> So I get that question a lot, and I love when I get that question because I take it as such a huge compliment. Uh, I'm not, I'm not a trained chef. I do not have any specific culinary training. I am a very well-researched home chef that has spent as long as I can remember in my life studying Michelin star chefs to learn what they do and how they do it because I just love learning what it is they do and love understanding the science, the chemistry and the physics of food. And I love recipe creation and that turned out to be a really great thing because then I got myself into this situation of doing um, keto and carnivore recipes and it turned into my YouTube channel where I can do this and help other people. So it has paid off very well, but I still spend, I mean, Ash can tell you, I spend hours researching <clears throat> things on YouTube, like how to cook different things. So, yeah. And not because I'm going to cook them, because I want to know the techniques they're using, and then I want to apply those to the keto and carnivore ingredients to create better recipes for you guys. Uh, 22Q Cat, I think, sums it up. She says, not a chef, but a food wizard. <laughs> <laughs> That's Thank you. I'll take that compliment all day long. Yeah. So 22Q Cat, uh, Lynn, is also like, just basically like family at this point. She... Oh, yeah. She is here for every video and every live stream and even the Ash Taylor live streams we do once a month called Ash Wednesdays. She came for that and she won a free hat yep. from that that we got a, a picture of her wearing. Awesome in it. She looks great. So, yep. super cool. Yep. You're just family now. You're stuck with us. You're going to have right. to adopt us. That is correct. <clears throat> yeah. So, we've got some good stuff going on here in the skillet. Yep. I'm seeing so lots got, of butter. Yep. So, we got lots of butter. Uh, so, we've got butter melted here that the broccoli is going to be dumped into now. Like so. Awesome. And I've got more butter over here that's melting where my eggs are going to go eventually. But So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this broccoli and I'm going to just move it around, get it coated in that butter. And I'm going to make sure all the pieces are touching the skillet. Like that. Kind of press them down into the butter. I've got this on like a medium and I'm probably going to push it up to a medium high. Heat. I'm going to season with only salt for the moment so we don't burn any of the other spices. So 
So I've got salt on the broccoli. It's in butter. And now I'm not going to touch it. This is one of the hardest things when you're learning to do these things cooking. It can be so hard, but do not touch the food while it's cooking unless there's a particular purpose in touching it. And right now, there would be no purpose in touching it, but moving it around would keep it from getting that brown, crusty layer on the bottom, which is how we're getting towards that roasted veggie thing. So we want that in there. Awesome. Um, great question. Someone thought that you were a firefighter. Is that true? Ah, not a firefighter. Um, I am massively in support of all first responders because I actually work as armed security, so I'm not a sworn officer but I do work armed security for a private university and work very closely with police and firefighters on a regular basis because of the, the various people that we deal with on a daily basis. So that's why you'll see me wearing hats that support things like firefighters, police officers, even the military, all of those kinds of things. Like I've got, <clears throat> I've got family and friends that do all of those jobs and I work very closely with some police officers. And I actually have a video because somebody called me uh, a Nazi because I was wearing a hat that had a blue line flag on it. And, you know, that's, I mean, everyone is entitled to their opinion, and I'm not upset by that at all. But um, I know that there are some people out there, police officers, firefighters, heck, accountants for that matter, that are not good people. And there are ones out there that are very good people. And... I just do the best I can to support people who are there for us and support us when we need it too. Yeah. Um, Bonita wants to know, when you were on keto, did you count calories <clears throat> or macros? So it's really interesting that you would ask that question. Um, I did not count calories. The only macro that I have ever counted on any of this stuff is carbs. And the reason is because I believe that once you understand how the body actually works, you start to realize, in my opinion at least, the calorie thing doesn't make any sense. And I say that because, uh, long story short, calories are not a unit of food measurement. They're a unit of heat measurement that's measured by a bomb calorimeter, and they increase the temperature of a certain amount of water one degree Celsius within the time frame that it takes for that food to be lit on fire and burnt completely. Um, your body does not light food on fire and burn it inside of your cells with like a furnace. So it doesn't really make sense to me for us to think of our food in terms of calories when that's what calories measure. So um, I'm not saying that counting calories can't be helpful for some people. I'm sure it can be. I've never found it to be very helpful and the science doesn't make any sense to me. And I actually have a health vlog coming out tomorrow at two o'clock and that is the subject of it is me talking all about calories and why I don't personally count them and why I think the concept of counting calories to me is silly. So, but that, if it works for you, that's great. That question was great timing though. It was there great, great timing. Yeah. So if you guys haven't uh, uh, heard me talk about calories before, watch my health vlog coming out tomorrow. Awesome. Um, I'm sure this comment will make you smile. Yep. Uh, Debbie, two AT. Um, I've been so bummed by painful illness, but your pancake recipe really made my day yesterday. Thank you. They were amazing. When I made them yesterday, it was so great. I can eat them guilt-free. Oh, I'm so glad you enjoy that. I've gotten a lot of compliments from people on that saying like, this is the best pancake recipe in the keto carnivore world that I've tried. And you know, I've never enjoyed the other ones, but this is great. I'm just so glad you guys enjoy it that much. Uh, I didn't think pancakes would be that big of a deal. I told but Chris they when are, I, and I'm very glad for it. So burger patties are almost done. Awesome. I told uh, Chris when he had me taste them on camera, like afterwards, I was like, it is probably the best thing he's ever made. I thought they were so good. Eat them any day of the week. Absolutely. Cool. Okay. <clears throat> um... Happy Ferret wants to know, can you do Ash's broccoli with frozen or do you need to start with fresh? You can totally do it with frozen. The thing with frozen is you need to kick it, cook it further in advance because you need to drain off all that water. And then I would say put it in like a plate 
or let it sit in a bowl or something with no lid and let the steam come off of it so that it dries out as much as possible because it's uh, frozen broccoli tends to have more water in it that cooks out and you need to get that water out of it so that you can get it to brown properly. So as long as you do that, it works totally fine. Awesome. Um, someone has a question here, Pearlberry. Mm -hmm. uh, the oh, yeah. concave shape to the patties, uh -huh. is there a special purpose? Does it even out the cooking? Yes, it evens out the cooking and it's also a really great indication of when they are done cooking. And they're gonna come out here in just a minute and I will show you that. But yes, it makes the center of the patty cook more evenly with the outer edge so that you don't get like hard, dry, overcooked edges of your burger and then red in the middle that's cold, which unfortunately happens if you uh, cook your burger patties flat. When they shrink up, they tend to do that very quickly. So, but you can see how much they shrink and how they start to stand up. <clears throat> and that way those edges aren't just totally overcooked. Smelling like heaven. Oh yeah, these are gonna be great. Cool. Um, got a couple people wanna know, do you have a cookbook? I do not have a cookbook, but as soon as I can afford to quit my day job, that is gonna be project number one, because I have people asking me for a cookbook all the time, and I appreciate that. I would love to write a cookbook for you guys. Uh, I just need to get to the point where I have the time that I can make that happen for you. Awesome. Um, Cheryl wants to know, do you count carbs now? Um, you know, if I'm coming up with something brand new that I think has some weird ingredient in it that I don't know how to work with, I will. But for the most part, I've done this for so long and I've done so many recipes now, I can kind of about guesstimate the number of carbs in something. And as long as it's not, you know, totally out of control, um, I generally don't bother. I don't take the time. But when I do, from time to time, I check it out and I go, okay, what's in this? And it's like, oh, yep, what's in this is uh, about three grams of carbs, like I thought it was. And that's, you know, that's kind of what it ends up being now because I've just done it for so long. Yeah. Um, this is actually probably a great question, babe, um, that you could answer. Yeah. Um, I have a couple people that have asked, um, so how do you know basically when those burger patties are done mm -hmm. when you took them out of the oven? Is it the swishing of the tray or how, how do you know? So when you see, first of all, you can see all the liquid like the liquid fat and some of the water and everything that cooks out of this that's all through the tray, that means that's coming out of the meat fibers because they're seizing. So that's part of it. Also, you can see how the burgers have shrunk up and they've stood up. When they puff up like that, it's the same thing. It's the meat fibers that are pulling together and seizing. When that happens, you basically know they're done. And honestly, I've just done this so much, I can look at them and tell. But if you're that concerned, I'll make sure that there's a, a wireless meat thermometer, you know, or like an instant read thermometer, those kinds of things linked. You can always take something like <clears throat> your instant read thermometer and just stick it into the center of the beef, the thickest part of the beef as close to the center as you can, and you just cook it to the temperature that you want. So these are probably going to be in the 150s-ish, maybe more. <clears throat> so see on the edge, that's in the 170 range, which is pretty normal, 165 in the middle. So yeah, totally food safe, totally fine. You can cook them less than that if you want. It's entirely up to you know how you like it, where you want it. But these are, like I said, it's kind of a fast food style burger. They always cook them more. So that's kind of the way that I do these. Awesome. Uh, do you have any plans for the grease uh, when you're done cooking it? Uh, not anything off the top of my head, but if you want, you can take this and you can make something like a sauce out of it. Um, <clears throat> you could pour it into the skillet when I cooked my eggs. This would be really, really good for cooking like your eggs or something like that. Um, you can also filter it out and stick it in the refrigerator. The easiest thing to do is put this in a bowl. You stick it in the refrigerator overnight, you let it harden down, and then you take the fat off of the top, which will be hard, and then take the liquid underneath, and you can either use that liquid for a gravy, pour it out, whatever it is you want to do with it. Um, I don't have anything specific to do with this tonight. Lots of liquid fat like this seems to upset my stomach. So I don't do the whole like pour a bunch of liquid fat on my food. Um, it, it just, butter I can do that, but liquid fat like this from beef, it just kind of makes my stomach feel bad, so. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, a lot of people are curious if we're actually going to be able to finish these burger patties. Uh, I won't have any problems. I don't know if Ash will finish both of hers, but 
but yeah, I won't. I won't have any. I'm I won't gonna have any problems. I'm gonna give it the good old college try. Yeah. yeah if we're not, it, I'll have lunch tomorrow. Yeah, right. We're gonna give it a good shot. So. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. But yeah, so that's how you do the burger patties, guys. You can shape them however you want. You can make them whatever size you want. You can season them however you want. It's extremely simple. Um, it's just about getting the dairy in there, that cottage cheese mixed in, or like I said, you can use ricotta, uh, or you could use cream cheese as well. It's just about getting that in there, getting it emulsified really well, and then sticking it on that top rack under the broiler, getting that brown crisp on the top, and watching the burger rise up so you know it's done. Awesome. That's, that's basically the deal. That is the secret to the burger patties, and it has not steered us wrong yet. Yeah. Um, before we go and mm -hmm. eat these delicious burger patties, which <clears> I'm <throat> super excited about, um, I think this might be the most people we've ever had tune into one of your live yeah. streams. Yeah. We, we currently are a little over 400 people, and That's it's been fantastic. pretty consistent. That's so. fantastic. Guys, I am so, 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 so grateful that you are here. Um, you know, we do this because we love to do this, and I just want to be able to help as many people as I can, and I appreciate all of you. All of my links are in the description box down below. My Patreon group and my YouTube memberships is how we afford to do this kind of stuff. Um, there's also a buy me a coffee link down there. So if you get value out of this and you want to share uh, a little bit of a donation or just uh, some support with us that way, so we have more resources to do more of this, we really appreciate that. If you don't, that's cool. There's no, no hard feelings about that at all. Uh, if you can hit the like, the, the thumbs up button, and if you can hit the subscribe button, if you're not already subscribed, that makes a huge difference for me. And my channel is over 70,000 subscribers right now. I'm pushing for that 100,000. That's the, that's the first kind of like huge hurdle. You get, you get 1,000 subscribers and they'll start putting ads on your video. And then the next hurdle that you have to try to hit as a YouTuber is 100,000. And we're getting there. Um, so subscribe if you haven't already. Share this with people who might benefit from this kind of stuff and if you have the time mark your calendars to be here on tuesday nights because we do a lot of really fun recipes i have a brand new carnivore pasta that i'm working on that i did an experiment with in our last live stream and everybody got to see the sauce that i created for that one and um, the video for the actual pasta noodles will be coming in the future here so um, you just kind of get to be the first to know about some of this stuff and i can just share some cool things with you if you have questions about cooking or about keto or carnivore or about us or just anything you want to know, this is the best way to get a hold of us and let us know that. And um, more than anything, we just love hanging out with you guys. We really appreciate that you're here because the whole purpose of this is you and trying to help you guys out. So thank you for everything you guys do. Absolutely. Um, also, I have seen numerous comments asking, where's Mel? <laughs> Sleeping in She's the kitchen? She's right there. <clears throat> She's ready for dinner. You want, you want a burger patty? Tell dad to make you a burger patty. Mm, I don't know about there that. There you go. All right. I don't know. Oh, this is one thing. Someone made a comment in one of my videos uh, chastising me for being cruel to my dog and told me how I was supposed to be feeding them all of the stuff that we we're eating and all this kind of stuff. I just want to clear it up right now. This dog's food is made for her from scratch. She is keto, almost carnivore, and all of her stuff is fresh. It's like turkey chicken, livers, gizzards, sometimes things like salmon or tuna or sardines. She gets eggs. She gets all of that and it is all cooked from scratch and it is heated up for her so she eats warm food every single day. She gets two full-size meals a day. This dog is very well fed so if anyone is concerned about Mel's well-being I guarantee you she is she is good to go and also we get her checked every six months at the vet. They do a full blood panel on her and the vet literally said this is the healthiest dog and the best blood work in a dog she has seen in her 20 some years of being a vet. So this dog is very well cared for. So whatever you do, don't feel sorry for that dog and don't feel a need to be upset with me for not feeding her because believe me, she gets plenty of homemade fresh food on a daily basis. She's not malnourished, that's no, for sure. No. Um, a lot of people are saying that they'd love to see what uh, goes in Mel's food and what she eats. Yeah, we're planning so. on doing a video with that uh, at some point in the future. We just need to have the time to get that film, but we'll be more than happy to show you guys uh, how we how we make her puppy chow mm -hmm. from scratch. Absolutely. So. Cool. Any other questions before we go today? <clears throat> um, lots of people want to know about the pupper dog's food and how much they like seeing Mel. Mm -hmm. uh, I think some people may just tune in for the dog. Um, 
That makes sense to me. <laughs> yeah. Um, honey, just a lot of people saying how much they enjoy your channel and just thanking us for what we do here. And um, I know we really appreciate them, but yeah. I don't, I'm not really seeing any more questions at the okay. moment. Okay. All right. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being here backstage with Chris. Uh, I've, I've just love the fact that we get to do this and it's because of you guys that we have the opportunity. So thank you for everything that you do. Go try these burger patties. Let me know how they work and let me know what you guys think. I'd love to know. Hope you guys enjoy these. Um, make sure to stick around for my Saturday recipe video because I've actually got two videos I'm working on and depending on which one I get done and which one seems the most appropriate, um, one of them will come out this Saturday and one will come out next Saturday. So. I think both of them are going to be really, really cool. So make sure to stick around, subscribe. If you haven't, click that uh, notification bell so you know when I go live or when I do things like this. Hit the thumbs up, leave a comment to let us know you were here. And just remember more than anything, we love and appreciate you guys. And can't wait to see you for the next recipe video and the next live stream next Tuesday. So thank you for watching. This is Chris Cook in Nashville. You guys eat your meat, love your life, and we'll see you right here in the kitchen for the next recipe. Bye.